Thank you. You may be seated. On behalf of the King's Academy School Board, faculty, and staff, I want to welcome you to this auspicious occasion. I don't know what the word auspicious means, but it sounds something like all special. And I would think this is a special. Miss Watkins, maybe when you come up, you can elucidate us on the etymology of that particular word. But it is a long awaited occasion, longer than usual for these graduates. We're, we're glad that we have been brought to this day. I may not know what auspicious means, but I do know what the word commencement means. And if you had asked me when I was uh, a high school graduate what commencement means, I would have guessed it had something to do with reflecting on the past. We come together and we remember uh, uh, times together. We mark accomplishments and uh, celebrate uh, work that has been completed. But that's actually not what the word commencement has to do with. I think of Jed Clampett. Anybody seen reruns of Beverly Hillbillies? He would say something like, I reckon we better commence to eating. Commence means to begin. And so we celebrate a new beginning, a new chapter in the lives of these graduates today. So again, welcome. We're glad you're here. We hope it's a special day for them and for you as family members and friends. I'm going to begin in prayer. And let's ask the Lord to honor us today with his presence and his favor. Heavenly Father, we do come to you with grateful hearts for the gift of life. And Lord, the gifts that you've given these four to bring them to a place of a high school graduation. Thank you for their families and seeds sown over the years. Thank you for teachers who have watered those seeds and coaches and others who have um, sown into the lives of these people to bring them to this place. And we know that every good and gi uh, perfect gift comes from you, and we celebrate you today. And we do ask for uh, the blessing of your presence, your favor, Lord, as we mark this occasion for these graduates. We pray that it will honor you and bless them. We pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, I'm Vicki Williams, and I'm the Honor Society sponsor. Um, we know that with COVID, many things were changed, were canceled, were rescheduled, were changed, um, and lots of other verbs we could use to describe what's happened during COVID. But one of the things that was um, interrupted was our National Honor Society induction for this year. We normally hold it in the spring, and we weren't able to do that. And uh, we, we are going to have an induction in the fall. Um, so we'll end up having two next year, one for this year's students and then one in the spring for next year's students. But we didn't want the year to end without honoring these kids uh, for what they've done this year. Um, to be included in the National Honor Society, the students went through several um, stages, including but not limited to their teacher recommendations, attendance requirements, <coughs> excuse me, service record, and maintaining an average of at least an 85. This is not an automatic acceptance. Um, it's indeed an honor to be included in the King's Academy National Honor Society. So when I call their names, I'd like for them to stand and remain standing. Cax graduates, McKenna Hosh, Mark Taylor, and then our undergraduates, Tori Frick, Clara Cranoodle, Trevor Klein, Aiden Reynolds, Emily Vaught, and Emma Wallace. And again, we're going to induct these guys in the fall. We can even have these two come back if they want to come home from college and do that. Uh, but we just want to say congratulations to all of you.
You have grown up to be a wonderful young woman, and we look forward to your future. We pray for you, David. Proverbs 31 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Always remember who you are. We love you. Jimmy, congratulations. We're proud of you. And we love you, and we can't wait to see how God works in your life. We love you. Good luck. Good afternoon, everybody. I am very glad that all of you made it. In all honesty, I sometimes wondered if this day would ever come with all the changes that were going on. But hey, we made it. I'm going to say a few words and then I'm going to introduce our valedictorian. And so, if you will. I have a few things I'd like to share. Every time you look back on your life, you should see most memories are staged in the small moments of ordinary days. Obviously, special occasions fill up most of our photo albums, but the time in between harbors the greatest treasures. As I stand here today, I recall the past graduate saying, it all went by so fast. And they're right. Taking a trip down memory lane brings back memories of fifth grade science projects where we learned how to make a clock potato with Miss Rickleman. I fondly remember our homecoming football game in ninth grade. And in between Miss Williams' life size cell projects, which I'll never forget, singing in chapel, Bible discussions with Alex Miller. Topic segues with Mr. Alberts and Ms. Watkins' brain-stretching English classes. I actually learned something. Surprising, right? Time is short and precious. The Bible even says in James 4, 14, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You see, our lives are practically just a little in existence. So you've got to make them count. You've got to take a moment and step back and realize the specialness of ordinary times. Ephesians warns us in chapter 5, 15 through 17, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is, because the best way you can live your life is in line with what God has planned for you. I speak that for myself and as counsel to, our, to my fellow graduates. And since this speech is a little cliche, I'll admit, here's a few for us to chew on as we celebrate this momentous day. Time is precious because it is in short supply. 
time waits for no one. Time is the most valuable thing a man or a woman can spend. Regret for wasted time is more wasted time. And all we have to do is decide what to do with the time that has been given to us. To wrap this up, I would like to say thanks. Thank you for all the fond memories. Thank you, teachers and staff, for making this graduation ceremony possible and for never giving up on us, even when we gave up on ourselves. Mom, Dad, thanks for always pushing me to do my best and for loving me all the same when I didn't. There were days. And to my fellow graduates, my friends, I am honored and thankful to have spent these years getting to know you and to become part of your family. I can't ask for anything more than to share this momentous day with you. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for being a part of my family. Now, if you will, please join me in welcoming our 2020 valedictorian, McKenna Hosh. Good afternoon. I think I just heard my mom breathe for the first time because I actually made it on time and I was not late. Um, it is an honor to be able to stand here on behalf of the 2020 graduates and to thank the board members of King's Academy, administration, CACS teachers, parents, family and friends for joining us and celebrating a milestone of accomplishments and new beginnings. Each individual in this room has a substantial part in at least one of the graduates' journeys. We want to thank board and administration for devoting long hours to the heart and soul of the school in order to keep it running and to obtain the reason and foundation of the school's existence. So thank you. To the teachers specifically, we thank you for your continual support throughout our years of education. Because of you, we are fully aware that there are no such things as stupid questions except the ones that go unsaid. We understand how to think for ourselves in order to form an argument, theory, or just simply confidence in our own answer. Without you, all four of us would still be sitting in a room looking at each other, still stuck on our first ninth grade assignment. Haley and I would be in some disagreement on whose way to solve the problem was best. Mark would either be talking to whoever's listening or trying to solve Haley's and mine's problem by comparing the issue to planes or computers. And Demi, Demi really just wants to be in unity. She's our peacemaker. So thank you teachers for pushing us to achieve so much more. Moms and dads, you deserve more than a thank you for your love and support, although we are very grateful. We appreciate, we appreciate you more than ever due to the constant teaching and effort to raise us with good morals and values and to keep Christ as the center of our lives. For this, we graciously thank you. Also, thank you for going to bed earlier so we could stay up and finish an assignment we either procrastinated on or forgot about and for staying asleep around 5 a.m. so we could get up and finish homework before we had to face Miss Watkins' question on where our homework could possibly be in a disappointed tone but loving heart that is very hard to resist. Lastly, to our family and friends, we are lucky to have you in such a time as this. You are who we go to in need of pure sympathy and distraction from our chaotic lives. Thank you for being a constant reminder of how important relationships are in both the highlands and the heartache. Today is the day we become accountable to someone other than our parents. Today is the day our lives begin. Today is the day we have to be ready for any and everything God has in store for us. Philippians 4.13 states, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. However, how can I fulfill my calling if I'm not secure in my true identity? Knowing our identity and the one who made us from scratch is very important. Our true identity in Christ surpasses our earthly identity given to us by society and even those closest to us. Without knowing our identity in Christ, trusting him becomes a battle. 
Trusting God and having faith in his outcome without maintaining a relationship is like a child blindly following a stranger. We begin to debate whether he is capable of giving us what we want rather than having the attitude that his plan is what we need. Depending on other people for satisfaction and pleasing others then becomes easier than taking a moment to converse with God. My point? My point is having a relationship with God can only strengthen your faith and your readiness for what he allows to grow you. College is a time where having this personal connection with God becomes very important, but also a struggle. Sometimes you as a Christian may have to stand up for what you believe in, even if you stand alone. There will come a time when you question your faith. Questioning your faith is not bad. If anything, it's normal. However, it becomes damaging when you sit back and do not do anything to fix it. I encourage you to find someone and talk with them through your whole, and note that I said whole, season of doubt until you feel renewed and fresh. I pray you will have the fight in you to not let Satan win that battle. Now that I have covered success and rewards with knowing God, I would like to address failure. College will be filled with trial and errors. Unfortunately, fa failure is tough and it is real. No one wishes to fail. However, failure is the only way to learn from your mistakes in order to succeed. As humans, we would like to believe we are masterminds when it comes to control. But instead of trying to control the situation by fixing it, I encourage you to control the way you are responding. Allow yourself to accept failure and to learn the lesson, then move forward stronger than before. Due to our class size, I would personally like to address each of my fellow classmates. Over this last year, I have observed each of my classmates' individual strengths, and through this, I value each student on a deeper level. Mark, you are a natural leader. You are the type of person to look at each situation with confidence, sometimes even fear, and attain the ability to keep your eyes forward and your faith in the one who controls it all. I hope you never lose this quality. This world needs leaders who will put their focus back on God, and I'm confident God will use you and your ability to lead your family and community in the right path towards him. Unfortunately, the world will make a fine attempt to destroy your platform as a Christian. And I'm asking you now, when classmates, teachers, and even peers question your faith, that you imagine an airplane at takeoff. Remember, airplanes go against the wind and not with it. In this very moment, you know exactly where your identity comes from because you have been under the guidance of your parents. Therefore, this mindset is fresh. I have had the honor of experiencing your childlike faith, and I pray you never forget who you are and whose you are. Haley and Demi, my girls. Haley, one of my favorite qualities about you is your courage. Despite your attempt to enjoy and attend field day, seeing your courage in classes while discussing a difficult topic has been mesmerizing. You have an amazing insight into some difficult concepts, and hearing you put into words what you have formulated in your mind has pushed me to dig deeper in learning about how others view the world we live in. I also have gotten to experience how good of a listener you are. We have had not many but three or four different conversations about our own lives, and I enjoyed getting to know you through those conversations. Thank you for listening to me through my struggles. Sometimes people just need the presence of an individual who is willing to just listen instead of voicing an opinion on how to fix the situation. And on many occasions, Haley was the individual whose presence I needed. Demi, I've only known you for five months. Two of those being in the classroom, but I instantly saw a peacemaker and nurturing soul in you. Bickering is not a friend of yours, and, my, and I admire you for that. Again, our world needs leaders, but we also need peacemakers. I hope you never lose your courage to be a peacemaker. As a small class of four, we have made our mark here at King's Academy. These last five years together have built us into becoming the people we are today. Our class may be small, but we are close to a strong army. We are all very close and enjoy each other's presence. We have reached small milestones together before today, but nothing like this one. I am so proud of my classmates, and I cannot stress that enough. You guys have been the ones I confide in, and I wish you nothing but the best. Be kind to yourself throughout this new journey. Do not hold back from what you want to say, from how you feel, and from the person you are called to be. Remember, all you have learned, and maybe even in a couple of years, we will go back to our parents and say, you were right about so many things. And that's the next biggest milestone our parents have, 
um, will be waiting for that may be monumental and more important than graduation. Parents have spent the last 17 to 18 years planting a seed which desires a relationship with God. And the time has come where we, on our own, are responsible for growing that seed by feeding it with our own relationship with God. To the graduates, I challenge you to get involved in a church community this first semester in college. Thus far, our faith has been shared by, with our parents, but now God wants one-on-one -on -one time to get to know you and for you to see firsthand how having a relationship with him reveals his sovereignty. It is then when we are one with Christ that our identity pours from his goodness and does not depend on us or the opinions of others. I pray you know your source of strength. I pray you ask God for wisdom in everything you do. And I pray that God guards your heart and blesses you throughout the days of your life. I am truly honored to graduate with these specific students, and I would not have it any other way. Welcome family, friends, staff, board members, and God to celebrate this day with our 2020 graduating seniors. What a journey we've had these last two years. When I told you about Aristotle, you wondered if you had signed up for the wrong class. When I told you to stop writing book reports, you cringed at every so what boldly written on your papers. When I told you you would have to analyze poems you had never seen all by yourself and present it to the class with no help from me, you figured I'd finally gone mad. And when I told you that you would defend your research paper in front of a faculty council, your deodorant failed you epically. <laughs> but I believed in you. I knew you could think. So I sat back and watched as I refused to lower my bar, yet I gave you every moment I could. McKenna, you became my regular lunch partner as you poured over your words trying to grasp, arguing, and so what? Mark, although you spent many off periods in my room trying to grasp Aristotle, the time you laid on my floor for over 30 minutes agonizing over till we have faces, reaching and I got it, only to hear me echo, so what? then collapsing on the floor again is most memorable. Haley, I think we shared more text messages back and forth than my unlimited plan would allow. <laughs> and Demi, you had to learn to think in a way you never dreamed existed. As a class, I pushed you hard. Yes, at some point each of you failed some tests or papers or even plagiarized, but not one of you stopped rising up, meeting the challenge and adopting determination and perseverance as your lifelong partner. What I hope you've truly gained is we don't always have to learn lessons the hard way. Remembering both your successes and your failures. Temporary setbacks and letdown are learning experiences, tough experiences, but you can choose to turn setbacks into comebacks. Failure's only permanent if you quit. Never forget that understanding your mindset, not your circumstances, governs your life decisions. Don't forget all the great works we've read and analyzed. They each have a lesson to teach that helps you understand who God created you to be. We lived at Herat with King Hrothgard and witnessed Beowulf defeat evil Grendel and hold to the code of Komitatas. We slid into the Renaissance and their love of sonnets but we didn't ever imagine a pandemic virus would shake our world. We watched tortured souls in the Scottish play learn that life without God and steeped in evil is, quote, a tale told by an idiot, signifying nothing. We time warped into the Enlightenment as Dunn caused our brain to hurt, and the Cavalier poets charged us to carpe diem, but we never dreamed a pandemic, pandemic virus would separate us. For months. We ended the year with the romantics who just missed the creator who made all of nature. You started this year in novels with Dorian's tortured soul and Screwtape's desire to torture the patient's soul. 
You witnessed Heathcliff's tortured soul and Marlowe's discovery of Kurtz, who claimed the horror, the horror at the end of his life. You watched Dr. Jekyll invite the torture of his own soul by Mr. Hyde, and you traveled to Africa and saw the tortured soul of a father who is unwilling to truly love God destroy five lives. This year you read 49 pieces of literature, six in-class novels, four outside-of-class novels. Now you've arrived at the station after a long train ride. But sooner or later, as Robert Hastings says, we realize there is no station, no single place. It's only the journey that matters. And today you end one journey only to start your next journey. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the guy who will decide where to go. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up, you'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest, except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You can get so confused that you'll start into race and headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place for people just waiting, waiting around for a yes or a no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Become aware you do have choices. Toss the excuses. Take responsibilities for the choices you freely make. Not everyone's going to be happy about your choices. Make the hard choices anyway. Small changes over time make a big difference. You will encounter times when you will be caught off guard, shocked by threatening circumstances, or unexpectedly wounded by a hurtful remark. I imagine, like me, you can literally feel your body flooded by emotions. I encourage you to ask the Lord first and let your emotions just hang out for a while. You know how old I am. I still wrestle with feelings of fear and doubt, and I do not have all the answers. But I am learning that while we sometimes feel afraid, we do not have to live afraid. I'm learning to allow fear to be the catalyst to continually trust in God more each time. So resist counting the miles waiting to arrive at the station. Life is a journey, not the end. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Oh, the places you go, there's fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be, with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. It's easy to think we're too strong, too grounded in our faith to become swayed, but 1 Corinthians 15.33 warns us, don't be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. I do not believe, nor would I encourage you to live in a Christian bubble, but I will tell you that who you embrace into your inner sphere should align themselves with God first. If we want our hearts to stay true to God, we must choose to surround ourselves with others who do the same. We must ask ourselves, who am I listening to? Who do I turn to when I need advice? Who has permission to speak into my life? Are the greatest influences in my life yielded completely to God? God never intended for us to travel life's journey alone, but compromising our walk with him will never lead to fulfilling who you are. Someone else's definition of you does not define you. Never waste your time trying to explain who you are to people who are committed to misunderstanding you. 
Paul Coelho says, close some doors today, not because of pride, incapacity, or arrogance, but simply because they lead you nowhere. Sometimes, when we are long gone, I wonder what others will remember about our choices, that we sought our own way or the Lord's, that we never risked failing or we failed and got up, that we faced challenges and quit or we stood tall and tackled every moment, that we held grudges or chose to forgive. Clarence Thomas, whoops, sorry, page stuck together. In 1904, William Borden graduated from a Chicago high school, heir to the Borden Dairy Estate and a millionaire. As he traveled around the world, he found a burden for hurting people. He wrote home to say, I'm going to give my life to prepare for a mission field. After making his decision, Borden wrote two words in the back of his Bible, no reserves. During his first semester at Yale, Borden started a movement that transformed the campus. By the end of his first year, 150 freshmen met for weekly Bible studies. By the time he was a senior, 1,000 out of Yale's 1,300 students met in such groups. But Borden didn't limit his outreach to campus students. He rescued street drunks and founded the Yale mission to help rehabilitate these people. When he graduated from Yale, Borden turned down some high-paying positions. He also wrote two more words in his Bible, no retreats. After graduate work at Princeton Seminary, he sailed for China to work with Muslims. He stopped first in Egypt to study Arabic. While in Egypt, he came down with spinal meningitis. Within a month, 25-year-old William Borden died. A waste of time, you may say, but not in God's plan. Prior to his death, Borden had written two more words in his Bible. Underneath the words, no reserves, no retreats, he had written, no regrets. Clarence Thomas gave a commencement address at Hillsdale College in 2016, and its few of his words echo exactly my challenge to you. Try to be a person whose actions teach others how to be better people. Reach out to the shy person who's not so popular. Stand up for others when they're treated unfairly. Take the time to listen to the friend who's having a difficult time. Do not hide your faith under a bushel basket, especially in this world that seems to have gone mad with political correctness. Treat others the way you would like to be treated if you stood in their shoes. My personal addition to Thomas's words, climb more mountains, eat more chocolate. Go barefoot more, swim more rivers, watch more sunsets, laugh more, love more, find your voice. Discover your passion and pursue it. Be honest, generous, and kind. Be brave and wild at heart. Take chances, ask questions. Cancel the pity party, instead be fearless, make a difference. It has been said that Jesus' real ministry was the person standing in front of him. Never let God slip out of your heart and soul. Your life is now. Seize it and make it amazing. No reserves, no retreats, no regrets, step out in faith, and choose to live comfortably uncomfortable. And you will succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three-quarter percent guaranteed. Kids, you'll move mountains, so you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Will you pray with me? Lord, you have ordained the life of Haley, McKenna, Demi, and Mark. Whisper in their ears which is the way to go. Guard their hearts, for their hearts are the wellsprings of their souls. Open your door and close others, that they may seek you and follow your chosen path. Define each of them, for your truth of who they are determines the way they will go. Bless this day, these families, and this school. In Jesus' name, amen. I leave you with one of my favorite verses, a verse that I try to live by, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide in these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You have left imprints on my heart, and I will never be the same. I'm not sure how I will handle not seeing you in class next year, but I do know that I love you more than words in my brain can express. Congratulations. Haley Carl, McKenna Hosh, Demi LeBlanc, Mark Taylor, Class of 2020.
you're unfamiliar with King's Academy, you got a, a taste from these students and this faculty member of what the environment is like. And it is indeed a good place. And Miss Watkins, I'm glad to say that everyone stayed awake except Maverick. Maverick didn't make it. But uh, <laughs> all right, the time we've been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. Mr. Josh Gentry, the school board president, will make this presentation as I call out the names. We began with Haley Elizabeth Carl. Haley has been at King's Academy for seven years. Her best memory is the friendships that she's fostered with teachers and students. Haley was a part of the Honor Society her sophomore year, and her future plans are attending Blinn College and getting a degree in political science. <laughs> McKenna Carly Hosh, our valedictorian. McKenna has been at King's five years. She has participated in cross country, track and field, and cheer. Outside of King's Academy, she was involved in dance and church mission activities. McKenna has been a part of the National Honor Society, cheer captain, homecoming queen, student of the month, and athlete of the year while at King's. Her best memory is meeting her best friend. Her future plans are to attend Abilene Christian University and to study interior design with a minor in business. Demi Elena LeBlanc. Demi has attended King's for one semester. Her best memory is having the help of all the staff and friends that she has made. Her future plans are to attend Blinn College and major in theater. <laughs> Mark Andrew Taylor, our salutatorian, Mark has been at CACS for six years. He has participated in student council. He was videographer for the football team. He has participated in mission days and been on the yearbook staff. His activities outside of CACS, community fundraiser for Muscular Dystrophy Association, and he has attended church mission trips. He puts his best memory as the football bus rides and bringing Maverick to school. His honors are National Honor Society, Homecoming King, and student of the month. I paused and that was my mistake. I need to turn the page and tell you that Mark plans to attend uh, TJC and knock out the basics and then achieve the BA in biomedical engineering. His goal is to open his own clinic uh, and in physical rehabilitation. The rest of the story. All right. Graduates, thank you so much for being such a blessing to your families and to uh, King's Academy. And in return at this time, we'd like to uh, pray over you and bless you. We want to invite uh, the family, moms and dads, families, if you'd like to come and gather around your student, if you guys want to spread out just a little bit and give a little bit of room for your families to come and join us. We're going to pray over our students. Um, while you're coming, let me remind you that uh, when you think about a biblical blessing, that there are, are a number of different parts that are involved uh, in that. One is, um, is physical touch. So if you want to put your hand on the shoulder or back of your student there, hold hands with them, that'd be fine. A second thing would be a word of affirmation, just expressing affirmation for who they are. Um, also, uh, picturing a beautiful future, and so uh, reminding them that God has great things in store for them, and then a commitment to go with them and to be with them and to support them throughout that. So as we pray, why don't you just pray those things over your student? Feel free to pray individually. Uh, over your students, and then I'll lead us in a corporate prayer as well, okay? Let's pray. Everybody join in with us if you would, all right? Father, we are so, so thankful. We stand before you humbled, God, uh, once again at your goodness and your faithfulness. 
God, how you've um, taken these children that you formed and fashioned in the womb, that you gave them life, and God, now that you have helped them to succeed to this point in life, God, that you, um, you've been so faithful and so good to them and to their families. And, and so, God, we want to, first and foremost, we want to say that we give you thanks for these students. We thank you, God, for all that they've accomplished, for all that they've done, for all that they've experienced. And God, we thank you for everything that you have in store for them. God, we know that the plans and the purposes that you have for them are plans for good and not for evil, plans to, to bless them. God plans to see them succeed and God to see them grow and to develop into everything that you've destined and predestined them to be. So God, now we ask, Lord, that you would uh, fill their hearts and their minds, God, with just your, um, the, good, the greatness of uh, who you are, that you would let them be overwhelmed with your love, let them be full of your spirit, and God, let them um, just follow you in all that they do. God, even as you bless them and uh, we commit to stand with them, to pray for them, to encourage them, and, and for the moms and dads to uh, continue to fund them, Lord, we pray that you would not only bless them, but that you would bless through them. God, that um, every place they go, Jesus, we know that's where you want to be. And so we ask that you really would, that you would make them, not only bless them, but make a them a blessing everywhere that they go. And may they, God, may they fulfill your purposes by your power, by your spirit, and for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Thank you, families. Thank you so much. Let's give our families a big hand today. They, uh, this is a time for them as well. So success for them as well. And now I have the, um, the amazing, distinct honor to uh, present to you the King's Academy Christian School graduating class of, 2000, uh, of 2020. And so uh, graduates, you may um, move your tassels at this time. Would you stand, please? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, at this time, we're dismissed for reception in the parlor. You're welcome to come.